CIRM today, <laughs> uh, and so, uh, so as David said, it is a blackboard talk, and I'm going to talk about uh, a joint work with uh, Jean-Marie Barbaro. Loïc uh, Le Trust. Uh, and Edgardo Stockmeyer. Uh, so, uh, and uh, if you are interested uh, in uh, the related paper, uh, it can be found on archive. So, uh, the version 2 is on archive since uh, a few days, I would say. Uh, okay. uh, so, uh, first, I'm going to. So, this talk is about uh, uh, the, Dirac, uh, the Dirac bug model. Uh, uh, in strong magnetic fields. Uh, and first, I'm going to say a few words about the general framework of this talk. So, framework. So, in this talk, uh, omega will be uh, an open bounded uh, smooth domain. in R2. And I will denote by, um, I will denote by, by N, the uh, outward <laughs> pointing normal. Uh, in this talk, you will have a magnetic field, B, uh, this is a smooth function on, uh, on omega, so real valued, uh, and A will be a vector potential associated with B. So d1 a2 minus d2 a1 is b, and a will be assumed to be a smooth vector potential on omega. Uh, so what is the definition of the main operator in this talk? So this is the magnetic Dirac operator. And this operator uh, takes the form, will be denoted by d h, h the semi-classical parameter, a, and this will be sigma dot p minus a, where p is uh, the usual uh, gradient operator, minus h, minus i h gradient. And sigma uh, is, uh, the Pauli, uh, this is uh, the couple of Pauli uh, matrices. So the usual uh, Pauli matrices. So sigma 1 is 0, 1, 1, 0. Sigma 2 is minus i, i, 0, 0. And probably I will need uh, sigma 3. 1 minus 1, 0, 0. Uh, 
so actually, we can describe the action of this operator uh, as follows. DHA may be written uh, like this, 0, 0. And uh, some uh, differential operator, DHA, and it's a formal adjoint, DHA star, where, where uh, DHA is minus 2IH, uh, DZ, uh, so DZ uh, being the usual cauchy riemann derivative, minus A1 plus IA2, and the formal adjoint is essentially uh, the same with uh, dz bar minus a1 minus ia2. Okay, this will be the action of the operator. And uh, to get an operator, one, one needs to specify the boundary conditions. And uh, And this condition will be the so-called MIT bag uh, boundary condition. And uh, what is this? So let's uh, consider B, say B, uh, the boundary operator, uh, valued in the two by two matrices and defined as uh, uh, B equal uh, minus I sigma three, uh, times sigma dot n. Sigma dot n uh, means that, it means sigma one, uh, n1, plus sigma two, n2, or maybe n1 sigma one, n2 sigma two. N1 uh, is the outward pointing normal to the boundary. And what is the boundary condition? So instead of the boundary condition, I'm going to describe the domain of this operator. So domain of DHA uh, is a subset of H1 of omega, so valued in C2, and with the condition that B phi equals phi. Okay. Uh, Okay, so this operator is self-adjoint. So uh, this is this is a self-adjoint talk. I am so sorry for that. Uh, this, is, this is the end of the talk. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, DHA is self-adjoint. So uh, this, uh, this, had be, this, has, this has been proved, for instance, uh, in a paper by Ben Gurria, Ben Gurria, Fournay, Stockmeyer, and Van den Bosch. Uh, in 2017. Uh, it has compact resolvent. Uh, this is some kind of byproduct of the fact that the, the operator is self-adjoint. Uh, and the spectrum can be described like that as the union of the increasing sequence of the positive eigenvalues and the decreasing sequence of the negative eigenvalues. So, like that, so minus lambda two minus, so lambda two minus is a positive number, and there is a minus here. So zero uh, does not belong to the spectrum. I will say uh, some words about this uh, later. And uh, of course, uh, these quantities 
uh, depend on H. So yes, I forgot to mention this. Uh, H is a positive number, the semi-classical semi parameter. And in this talk, H will go to 0. And uh, the aim of the talk is to describe the behavior of the eigenvalues when H goes to 0. So for example, can we say something about lambda 1 plus of H when H goes to 0? Can we describe the asymptotic behavior of this eigenvalue? Uh, before, um, uh, oops. Uh, maybe I can yes, I can put this one up there. Uh, So I have first an important comment about, say, the, the symmetries, the natural symmetries of this operator. Uh, so some words about the charge conjugation. So consider the following operator, C. So uh, from C2 to C2, uh, given by uh, phi gives uh, sigma 1 phi bar. Phi bar is just the complex uh, conjugate component by component. And uh, we can see that uh, the, the, the image of the domain of the operator by C uh, is the domain of the operator. So the domain is stable by C. Uh, you can also see that the domain actually does not depend on the magnetic field. So you can also write that it's the domain of H of um, so the domain of dH minus A, if you want. It does not depend on the, on the magnetic field. And that C dH A, C, is minus dH minus A. <clears throat> so this operator, dH minus A, is the magnetic Dirac operator with opposite magnetic field. And so uh, with this relation, you see that the spectrum of dH A is related to the spectrum of dH minus A. It's the opposite. Of course, when A is 0, uh, this shows that the spectrum is symmetric with respect to 0. The spectrum uh, symmetric with respect to 0. But when A is not zero, in general, it's not the case. And we will see that in the main theorems. So the results we that we obtained. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> so there will be a general assumption that the magnetic field is positive. In the wall talk, B is positive. Up to the boundary. Um, <clears throat> so I will denote by B0 the minimum of, of B on omega bar. And at some point in the talk, I will need also the minimum of B, B0 prime, on the boundary.
So the first results concern the positive eigenvalues. So lambda 1 plus, lambda 2 plus, etc. And uh, so positive eigenvalues. <coughs> and to describe these results, I will need an, an auxiliary uh, function called phi, which satisfies the following uh, equation. Laplace of phi equals b. So on omega, and phi equals zero on d omega. B is the boundary uh, no, b is the magnetic field. This is not the same b. This is this is. <laughs> and so, uh, since b is positive, you see that this phi is subharmonic. Sub that since phi is zero on the boundary, you see that phi is negative. Uh, its minimum is called phi min. It's negative, and it is obtained in omega. So at some point call, called x min. So this phi is convenient. This, uh, this is some kind of potential generating the magnetic field. Uh, so we take as vector potential by using the gauge invariance we take this vector potential. Yes, I forgot to mention that omega is simply connected. So you, you are free to choose uh, such a gauge. In fact, yes, indeed you have that. You, you indeed have that. So this is a convenient vector potential. Uh, I will need uh, another assumption to state uh, our first main theorem. Uh, first, first of all, uh, we will assume that phi has a unique minimum. And that this minimum is non-degenerate. And I will just write that the Hessian matrix of phi at x min is positive definite. So you could ask, uh, do you have an example when this assumption is satisfied? Yes. Yes, uh, when B is constant and omega strictly convex. So this is satisfied. When B is constant and omega strictly convex, it comes from uh, old results uh, of uh, Cavall. So To state the result, I will need some more uh, notation involving uh, functional spaces of holomorphic functions. Uh, so I will need uh, the so-called Zegal-Bargman space. So defined uh, as follows. So this, this is denoted by B2 of C. So this is a subspace of holomorphic functions, so of entire functions, uh, such that some integral is finite. So I call this nB of u, uh, the integral of u of y1 plus iy2 squared, 
with some exponential here related to the minimum of uh, phi. So uh, I write it here, Asian x min of y, y. So dy. So uh, a u belongs to B2 of C when this integral, U is holomorphic and this integral finite. <coughs> and I will need a second uh, functional space, the RD space. Uh, the usual RD space. So H2 of omega. So these are holomorphic functions on omega such that the L2 norm of U on the boundary exists and is finite. So, so this notation means the L2 norm of U on the boundary. Uh, then, uh, associated with this space, you have norms, NB, and uh, NH. And associated with this norm, you have distances. Distance B and distance so associated distance. Now I have all the elements to state the theorem. The first theorem. So let's call this theorem, theorem plus for the positive eigenvalues. Uh, so, given K, so the, asymptotic, the asymptotics of lambda K plus of H is as follows. Uh, so when H goes to zero, so we have a one term asymptotics. So, so you have here on the numerator, you have the distance for the RD uh, topology, Z minus Z min. So by Z min, I just, I just mean X min, but the complex version of X min. X min one plus I X min two. <laughs> to the power uh, K minus one. So the distance between this uh, polynomial and the following subspace of the RD space, HK2 of omega, uh, so divided by the distance for uh, the Bachmann topology between z to the power of k minus 1 and some, sub, some subspace of polynomials of degree less than k minus 2. So this quantity is squared, and the most important comes here. Uh, you have h to the power 1 minus k times e to 2 phi min divided by h. So, uh, so the, eigen, the positive eigenvalues go exponentially to 0. Phi min is negative. And, uh, the, and then you have a spectral gap because you see that when k uh, becomes large, uh, this, pow th this power uh, becomes uh, more and more negative. And uh, what are these uh, spaces? <laughs> so H2K of omega. So is a subspace of H2 of omega uh, such that uh, all the derivatives of U at z min 
are 0 up to k. To k minus 1. OK, and I recall that p, the, this, uh, sub, this is, uh, vector space pk, will be Uh, so, PK so P minus one is zero, and PK minus two is uh, is one Z. Z to k minus 2. Like that. So we have the one term asymptotics for, for the positive eigenvalues, like that. And so I repeat if you consider, for example, lambda 2 minus lambda 1, when h goes to 0, uh, it, 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 it's, not, it's not 0. <laughs> Because of, of this power here. Uh, just a comment. So uh, we obtained uh, some very close results for another operator recently. Uh, so these results looks. Uh, Uh, similar uh, to what we did with the same co-authors for the uh, Dirichlet-Pauli operator operator. So. And probably only for the following operator, minus h gradient minus a squared minus hb. So with Dirichlet boundary condition on omega and the same assumptions as for this theorem. But this is for this operator. And for this operator, we get exactly the same exponential decay. But it's a surprise. Because this one is the Dirac operator, and this one is formally obtained with the square of the Dirac operator, the magnetic Dirac operator. And this was published in GEMS uh, last year. And I, I have also to say that for this result, we don't have a one term asymptotics. We have upper and lower bound, and in some situations, the upper and lower bound match, but not always, it seems. We are not sure. And so uh, here comes the second result. Yes. So, so do you have an explication for, explanation for this uh, mystery? Some heuristic? Um, no. Thank you. <laughs> This is a very deep answer. I don't know. <laughs> so let me state now the, the theorem about negative eigenvalues. And probably uh, I will only have time to, to state the theorems. So there is a first result. So uh, say theorem minus. So 
the, this first theorem tells us the behavior of lambda 1 minus when h goes to 0. This is the first theorem for the first eigenvalue. So there exists a universal constant called a0 between 0 and square root of 2 uh, such that when h goes to 0, lambda 1 minus of h uh, uh, is uh, essentially h to 1 half times the minimum uh, between square root of 2b0 and uh, a0 square root of b0 prime, like that. So b0 is the infimum of b, and b0 prime is the infimum of b only on the boundary. Uh, when b is constant, when b is constant, b0 and b0 prime are the same. And this universal constant is strictly less than square root of 2. So for constant magnetic field, you only have this term, a0, times the square root of h. And so uh, the first uh, <laughs> obvious comment is that uh, this, this uh, asymptotic behavior and this one uh, dramatically differ. This is a square root of h. This is something exponentially small. So the spectrum is really not symmetric <laughs> when h goes to 0. Uh, so what is a0? That's your question. Actually, A0 is related to the magnetic Dirac operator on R2 plus with magnetic field uh, equal to 1. Uh, so, uh, so if you call, say, dr 2 plus, so the Dirac operator with MIT condition with constant magnetic field, uh, so magnetic Dirac operator, with MIT condition, on R2 plus, uh, magnetic uh, is B equal 1. Then the spectrum can be described as follows. So the spectrum of D, R2 plus, is the union of the positive real line and of this part uh, here, uh, minus A0, I should say, and uh, okay, like that. So A0 is some kind, is a spectral gap, the size of the spectral gap of this operator. Uh, maybe. Yes. So it's all the other, so. It's the F space, yes. It's the F space, okay. F space, yes. So can you and of course, beyond your question, uh, uh, you, you can, you so can, can excuse me. Yes. Ah, okay, I have, I have to repeat the question. So I was wondering if R2 plus was the first quadrant or the half space. And the answer was it's the half space. Half space, <laughs> half space. Perfect. <laughs> it's not R plus squared. <laughs> so actually, uh, th th this result is something what we did in our paper. <laughs> we explain why we have some, this spectral gap here even for the case with constant magnetic field on the earth space. Uh, 
so David, uh, how much time do do I have? So you have uh, three minutes. Three minutes with questions and discussion. Oh. <laughs> um, yes, I can state the, 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 the another theorem, but uh, uh, in one minute, two minutes. Uh, so this theorem concerns the case when B equals 1 and when the boundary is an analytic curve. In this case, we can describe all the first eigenvalues, lambda 1 minus, lambda 2 minus, etc., as follows. So I skip this. <laughs> uh, maybe not all of this. <laughs> So, for, so, so take some k, then uh, lambda k minus of h is a0 square root of h, so, and, and this agrees with uh, this theorem, when b0 is, is equal to 1, and b0 prime equal to 1, plus h3 half, some other mysterious uh, positive constant C0, and here comes the spectral gap. Lam by lambda n, I mean just the nth eigenvalue of some operator Q effective uh, of h, so plus small o of h to the power 3 half, and Q effective is an operator on the boundary of the domain, uh, which is the following. Uh, so this is capital DS, so capital DS is minus I uh, partial derivative with respect to S, plus some phase shift, TH squared, minus the curvature of the boundary squared, divided by 12. So 12. I have to, to say a word about 12. It takes 10 pages in the paper to find 12. Uh, and th is a phase shift given by the volume of omega divided by h times the, the length of the boundary of omega minus a0, the same, divided by square root of h plus pi over the length of the boundary. And probably I have to stop here. <laughs> hmm? Certainly. <laughs> so I stop. Okay. So thanks a lot. So thank you very much for this uh, nice talk, except uh, for the fact that it was solfe joint. Questions? Ah, Guy has a question. Is, is the spectral gap due to the fact that uh, the potential, the magnetic potential, is not degenerated? The, is the, not degenerated? Which potential? The phi, we solve uh, no. Laplacian phi no. equal, for, equal for, So for, uh, for this theorem, for yeah. the theorem with, for the negative eigenvalues, uh, no, I don't... For, for the positive, excuse me. So I, uh, I, I was wondering uh, for the positive. Uh, yes, this one. OK, OK. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's, it's related to the non-degeneracy of the minimum of phi. Yes. Yeah, okay. And the fact that we, we are able to compute this constant precisely. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. so. but otherwise, if, it, if there is a degeneracy, it happens. If, uh, the, the, uh, if what, what? Two minima. Two minima. Yeah. Yeah, okay. If you have two minima, you would probably get, if you imagine a domain like that, Probably here there are, there, are, there are two minima, okay. and uh, we could expect some kind of tunneling uh, effect. Okay. Uh, that is an exponentially uh, small error, uh, but uh, okay. <laughs> everything is already exponentially small here. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I have a second question. Uh, uh, what about the WKV uh, methods? Uh, uh, because. Uh, 
for the exponential decay, it, 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 sometimes it, it is efficient for the first eigenvalue. In to, this to, case, to, I don't think so. The okay. structure is, uh, is really different from what happens for the, say, the magnetic Laplacian or even the electric Laplacian. Here, okay. it's, it's not the same. Maybe it's related. Okay. Thank you. Well, yes, maybe. Uh, Okay, so I may have two questions in one. Um, so your effective operator that you obtain on the boundary, so it has some periodic boundary con periodic condition? Yes, yes, it's... Uh, okay, and so don't you think uh, up to some uh, gauge transform, or I don't know, you could recover some, actually the square of some Dirac operator on the boundary? Oh, Loic is in the room, and I'm sure that... <laughs> He burns to answer your question. So actually, we, we ask ourselves if it was the case, but it's, it's not. The, there is a, a very simple argument in the case of the disk, because, uh, I mean, your TH is just uh, somehow uh, an effective change in the momentum uh, scale. So you, you can uh, uh, take TH such that the lowest eigen, eigenvalue will be... Uh, uh, zero squared minus uh, one over r divided uh, squared divided by twelve. So it will be a neg uh, it, it won't be a positive operator. You can take uh, some t for some th you have uh, uh, a momentum such that uh, the associated uh, eigenvalue is not positive. So it's not a square. And actually, we can say that somehow uh, the Effective operator, effective Dirac operator will be the one on the half space, and then the, the Q effective H will be somehow a, a Schrödinger operator uh, at second order, first order Dirac operator, and then second order Schrödinger. So, question? Any any online question? Maybe. Can I have a quick question, David? So, Alain, okay. Alain Joua is asking a question. So, it's a bit of a question, probably. Um, the boundary conditions, it was expressed like bi equals five or something like that. I was wondering if you put an extra parameter and say bi equals you know, lambda phi and perform similar analysis depending on this parameter. Is it completely? Uh, hidden to to wiggle a little bit problem. I'm not sure <laughs> if I understood the question actually because uh... Uh, I am sure I didn't understand. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because of the, the sound is not perfect from your side. It's the question is can we change a little bit the boundary conditions? Yes. Still perform. Yes, yes, we can change a bit this boundary condition and consider say variable boundary conditions depending. Uh, we can add some more uh, fle we have flexibility on the boundary condition. We are not uh, restricted to the to the MIT condition. I stated the theorem because it's easier to state this theorem in this very special uh, case. Okay, thanks. Good. Okay, so we have to stop. So thanks again for your nice talk. <laughs>